So my mother and father-in-law love gardening. My father-in-law especially loved to garden. He was always working in his garden. Flower-oriented. And my mother-in-law was always designing bouquets and putting them together. There were a lot of bouquets. Well, they supplied a lot of bouquets to the to uh, to their church. Some for our wedding. I don't know that they were that involved with sunflowers, but I know that uh, they wanted me to do a sunflower painting for for them. And at some point, I did. And this is it. Now, my father-in-law has passed away years ago, and my mother-in-law, um, she can't keep she can't keep this hanging on her wall anymore in the place that she lives now. She uh, she's getting older and doesn't have the space. Here, let me just flip the screen around so I can see what's going on here. So. Uh, we got this back, moving her from her apartment to the smaller apartment now, or from her house. Um, I guess what I want to say about this is that uh, I love this painting. I'm better at painting than I was then. This is about, this painting I think was done about 20 to 25 years ago-ish. Um, I'm very much tidier and more vivid in many ways with my paintings nowadays. I'm also more of a coward. When I made this painting, at that time I was using primarily a round brush. And a much larger brush. So I wasn't afraid to put a lot of texture, even in the background. Because I thought I could outcompete the background with the foreground. It seems to have worked. The painting as a whole is much looser than what I do now. And I just wasn't afraid to introduce a lot of different colors. You know, we have we have the full range here. Well, for, for my palette, ultramarine blue, cobalt blue, yellow ochre, white, burnt sienna, and viridian green. At that time, I was still using quite a bit of viridian green. So you have these leaves of all different colors. I also was not afraid to go very dark in some of the shadow area, shadowy areas. I'm a little bit tentative about doing that these days. I miss those days. I still love painting. You know, and, and I think I am better at it than I was, but uh, I was just more bold, more raw. You know, you can barely see the difference between these, these petals on the flowers and the background. And these petals on the sunflowers they're not a nice little row of petals around the center of the sunflower. They're all over the place because as the sunflower gets older, they take on quite a distinct character and the, the character is that they become disorganized. Some are dying, some are drying out, etc, etc. You know what I mean. Oops. Um, so it was really nice to have this painting. Well, it's back to us now. Now it's going to hang on our wall and we're keeping it. Partly sentimental purposes, but partly because we both really like the painting. I could, I could improve it. I don't know if I will or not. I might just leave it for the sake of, you know, posterity. I don't know. Anyway, uh, so yeah, now let me just zoom in and give you a couple of close-ups of areas. I don't even know if you're interested, but there's, there's quite a difference between what I do now and what I did then. I love this painting. I love the looseness of it. I love the boldness. When I started painting, I was more bold, as with almost all painters. More bold, more naive, less confined by what teachers or experience tells you. Um, and often, the best paintings come out of a young painter's life. Another thing that's, that's actually been a bit of a handicap, and that's my own fault. I have not done, I keep talking about it, but I have not gone out plein air painting. Painting on site. Everything I paint now is from my imagination, lately. I don't use photographs or references. I just make things up. 
and that's great. I love it, but it's a really healthy thing for a, for an artist to do is is just to just to get out into nature, see stuff, try to portray it. Never mind the finished painting. Just try to pour, try to portray the the strongest feeling that you have about a scene. Usually, it's shape and light, right? Composition is malleable, but just getting out there. I am guilty of not doing that. So next summer, I'm going to try to make a point of doing it. Over the winter here, we get so much rain. Opportunities are really, really few and far between. I'm not going to go paint an oil painting on a cotton canvas in the rain, because that's just stupid. Anyway, let me just get by in the camera here. I'll click this screen back, and I'll loosen up the swivel on the camera and zoom in. See the petals on the left hand side of that small fresh bloom practically blend in with the background. And you can see how clumsy the highlights are on those leaves, you know, or on those petals. Intentionally clumsy. But now I tend to worry about those things more, and I really shouldn't, you know? Let's see where are we going. Let's go down this one. I think that if I were to touch it up now, I would probably make the definition between the, between the flowers in the background a little bit stronger. But it's pretty rough painting, eh? Like, it's, it's pretty impressionistic. No, it's not naive art, but it's fearless art, that's for sure. And sometimes I wish that these days I had that, that boldness just to walk in there and paint something and, and say, okay, looks good, I'm leaving it. Anyway, like I say, going out plein air painting does that for you. It does, it invigorates you, it gives you renewed strength. Okay, I guess that's it. I have not worked any further on, on, the, on the painting that I'm working on. I've left it be because I'm playing with some woodwork, as I mentioned, on my air gun. And there are a few other things that are getting closer to Christmas require attention. I may get to doing the water. I may get to working on the water on the on the newer painting tomorrow. We'll see. I we'll see. We have to. We I know I've got a, a few things slated, a few jobs slated for tomorrow too. But I'm getting kind of anxious. I would to to work on that other one. Anyway, blah blah blah. Talk to you soon, guys.